Astronomers have detected molecules uniquely associated with life on an exoplanet 124 light years away. The Astrophysical Journal Letters reports, we find independent evidence of DMS or DMDS in the atmosphere at a 3 sigma significance. These compounds dimethyl sulfide and dimethyl disulfide are produced exclusively by living organisms on Earth, primarily marine phytoplanktons and bacteria during sulfur metabolism. Scientists have predicted for decades that these would be robust biosignatures on exoplanets. But is this actually evidence of alien life or there is something else entirely? As an astronomer, I like to keep my eyes and mind open, but at the same time, I really heavily rely on what the data says. K218b is a sub-Neptune exoplanet 8.6 Earth masses orbiting in the habitable zone of a red dwarf star. Current models suggest it's likely a Hycean world, a planet with global water ocean beneath a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. The Cambridge team used JWST's MIRI infrared instrument to analyze K218b's mid-infrared spectra, which is roughly from 6 to 12 microns. Their data revealed specific absorption features that only DMS or DMDS could explain. The signal is inconsistent with a featureless spectra at 3.4 sigma significance, meaning it's definitely not random noise. The crucial question, does this indicate biological activity or could unknown abiotic chemistry be responsible? The researchers themselves emphasize both possibilities. Even a chemical discovery would be revolutionary for atmospheric science. This isn't the team's first detection of K218b. Remember in 2023, this news came out from the same team that they found potential life? Well, back then they used JWST's near spec and the nearest instrument, which works from 1 to 5 micrometers, and detected methane and carbon dioxide at 5 sigma and 3 sigma confidence, respectively. In case you're confused with what the 3, 5, and 2 sigmas mean, stick around because I will explain that. Okay, moving on. They also reported a tentative DMS signal back then, but only at a 2 sigma confidence, approximately a 1 in 20 chance of being a random fluctuation. That earlier detection had two major problems. Number one, the statistical confidence was too low for a potential biosignature claim. And number two, the near-infrared DMS features overlapped significantly with methane and carbon dioxide, creating really strong degeneracies. It was due to these limitations that prompted this follow-up study using the mid-infrared wavelengths where DMS and DMDS have more distinct spectral signatures, which means it's easier to disentangle them from methane and CO2 lines. The new observations revealed multiple spectral features between 6 and 11 microns that cannot be explained by most molecules predicted for K218b, with the exception of, you guessed right, DMS and DMDS. The data shows three key improvements. Number one, independent detection using a different instrument at different wavelengths. Number two, stronger signal at three sigma confidence, which is 99.7% and only a 0.3% chance of being a random fluctuation. And number three, tested against 20 different molecules with only DMS and DMDS matching the observed pattern. So we are definitely heading somewhere. They found specific absorption features between 6.8 and 8 microns with broader features around 9.8 and 10.5 microns, precisely matching these compounds' expected fingerprints. The estimated atmospheric abundance is approximately 10 to the minus 5 or 10 parts per million, which aligns with the theoretical predictions for a biologically active Hycean world. The paper notes that these abundance levels are physically plausible for realistic levels of biogenic sources. When testing with DMS or only 
DMDS in the, and their models, indicating that both compounds potentially contribute to the signal. They achieved detection significance of 2.9 and 3.2 sigma respectively. So what does the sigma values mean in scientific detection? Sigma quantifies statistical confidence. How certain are we that a signal is real versus random noise? One sigma equates to 68%, which is likely noise. One in three chance of a random fluctuation. Two sigma, possibly real. 1 in 20 chance for a random fluctuation. 3 sigma, 99.7, probably real. 1 in 370 chance of a random fluctuation. 5 sigma, 99.9999%, definitely real. 1 in 3.5 million chance of a random fluctuation. For extraordinary claims like potential biosignatures, most scientists require a 5 sigma confidence. This isn't overly cautious. Astronomy's history is filled with 3 sigma discoveries that disappeared with much better data. So we need more and more data. James Webb needs to observe that planet even more to gather more statistical significance to say it with the fact that this was better than a 3 sigma. The paper acknowledges this standard directly. It quotes, while this is great evidence to keep looking, this is not enough to qualify as a robust scientific discovery. For that, we need to reach the level of 5 sigma. So James Webb detected these molecules using transmission spectroscopy. I have made many videos going over this process, so I would highly encourage you to watch this. It should be flashing up in the I button, but to give you a refresher, it analyzes the starlight as it filters through K218b's atmosphere during the transit, or when the planet passes in front of its host star. The observation specifics are detailed in the paper. The observations are conducted between April 25 and 26, 2024 for approximately 5.85 hours. As mentioned, it used MIRI's low resolution spectrograph between 5 to 12 micron wavelengths and it did 5,095 total integrations with 25 groups per integration. It covered 2.66 hours in transit with the remaining time providing the baseline. The reason the study was conducted in the mid-infrared range again provides distinct advantages for these molecules. Remember, as I said, that these molecules at near-infrared had overlap with methane and CO2? Well, in the mid-infrared, those overlaps are no longer a concern. Specifically in the mid-infrared, DMS and DMDS have distinctive spectral features between 6.8 to 8 microns and 9 to 11 microns. That stands out way more clearly. The team notes that the spectral amplitude of these observed features, 300 to 400 ppm, are significantly larger compared to the 200 ppm amplitudes seen in previous mid-infrared observations, making these detections more robust. So clearly we are headed in the right direction and this definitely gives us more confidence for a follow-up observation towards these potentially habitable zones. Again, by saying habitable, I definitely do not mean there are advanced alien life. What I rather mean is there could be potential simple microbial life form in these oceans. If confirmed at higher confidence, this discovery would really have profound implications. First, it could provide evidence for microbial life on K218b, just like I mentioned. Again, they would likely be marine organisms. Second, it would suggest life might be common throughout the galaxy. It's just waiting for us to be observed. Red dwarfs comprise 75% of stars in the Milky Way, and finding potential biosignatures on one of these habitable zone planets that have been studied in details implied that life could literally be widespread. Third, it would validate the Hycean world hypothesis that hydrogen-rich atmospheric planets with global oceans could support life despite unlike being Earth-like. The team estimates that they need one to three additional transits with JWST's MIRI and about 8 to 24 more hours of observation time to potentially reach 5 sigma detection. Importantly, the paper states that while DMS has been predicted to be robust to biosignatures, there is always a possibility that we may not have accounted for some physics that we don't know of. This is definitely an important step forward in the search for life in exoplanets. 
Whether this turns out to be evidence of life or a new chemical process, it demonstrates the power of JWST to revolutionize our understanding of exoplanet atmosphere. I hope you all enjoyed this video. By the way, I recently made a video where I actually processed raw James Webb data. No, it's not an exoplanet transit spectroscopic data. This is the JWST image of the Carina Nebula. I processed all of the FITS files and made a detailed video for you guys. Also, in case you're wondering what this new thing in my background is, this is my first ever product from my store, GiveTheStars.com. It's a custom star chart that captures the night sky for a specific date and time. And this becomes a lovely gift for your loved ones. Nonetheless, thank you for sticking around till the end. Keep looking up, keep being hopeful, and I will catch you guys in the next one really soon.